I'm Valerie Steele, and I'm editor of the Bloomsbury Fashion Video Archive. It's hard to choose favorite aspects of this period from 1979 to early 21st century, but I would call out some of the aspects of it. For example, Thierry Mugler's amazing fashion shows with elaborate sort of uh, fembot couture, uh, Jean-Paul Gaultier's, again, incredible 1980s fashions, which transformed male and female gender stereotypes, class stereotypes, and ideals of beauty. The key trends we should look out for would include the constant references to subcultural and musical styles. So for example, the real importance of punk and new wave and gothic and grunge and hip hop, all of which emerged coming out of Vivian Westwood as the original first designer to take up on punk looks. That's very important. And then again, we need to look at trends such as the importance of fashion models and how changes in fashion models reflect changes in ideals of feminine beauty. So you get the glamazons of the early 1990s, and then that segues into the waif look by contrast. So as so often in fashion, it moves from one pendulum extreme to the other. To have a video archive where you see fashion in motion is incredibly important to get a sense of its reality, because fashion is an embodied experience and bodies move and live and breathe. Also, because fashion is, in a sense, a reflection of the world around us, it's important not only for fashion historians, but for all kinds of historians and scholars to have access to the fashions of the past to get a sense of attitudes, beliefs, all of which are in some way embedded in the clothes and in the way people otherwise adorn themselves, the hairstyle, the makeup, the themes, because many of these live fashion shows are really performance art, theatrical experiences. And you see when designers like McQueen or Galliano or Mugler create a real mise-en-scene and a storyline, that also tells us a lot about what's thought important at any given time. One reason these videos are so valuable is the way they're indexed. So you can search them not only by the name of the designer or the brand, but also by, for example, techniques. You could look up bias cut, or you could look up corset, and it immediately will reference all of the different designers who have used the bias cut, and will show you that when you come to it in the video. So all fashion students and fashion designers, I think, will find an archive like this incredibly important. And more generally, I think scholars in a wide variety of fields, but particularly historians of all sorts, and people who are studying popular culture and women's studies, will find it very important to see the images of women and men that are being presented on these runways as the ideal for that season, for that designer's vision, for that moment in time. One way you can use the video in teaching or research is you can take a clip out of it and put it right into a PowerPoint that you're using for a lecture. And so in that way, you can focus on a particular moment from one or a variety of different videos. In this way, you can assimilate a huge amount of knowledge and then boil it down to key moments, which you can use either in your own research or in teaching. It's really an international fashion archive, and it spans the period from 1979 to 2003, so really an incredibly important period of recent fashion history.